Something I get asked all the time is what camera are you using? And I'm of the opinion that the camera really doesn't matter, but the lens really does, particularly when the conversation centered around Instagram, which for me it often is. But in this video, we're gonna put that to the test. So I'm setting up a simple kind of Instagram product flat lay to show off some products and photograph them. And I'm gonna be using two cameras. One camera is gonna be the A7R2, which is an older but very capable camera from Sony. And the other camera is a secondhand Sony Alpha 5100, which I got for about 200 pounds. I use it as what I call my burner camera. It doesn't matter if I break it or lose it, you know, it's not gonna hurt me too bad. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take pictures on both of these cameras using three different lenses and then I'm gonna put them on the screen and you can decide which was taken on the more professional camera and which was taken on the secondhand entry level camera. And then later on in the video, we're gonna talk about the pros and cons and the limitations of each of these cameras. So the subject of our photographs today is gonna to be this watch that was sent over by uh, Filippo Loretti. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, big thanks for those guys for sending it over and it's gonna be perfect for this type of thing because we're gonna to put together a kind of, let's say a fashion flat lay and it's gonna feature the watch as the main subject. And then I've kind of gone for an Oxford shirt and some chinos and trainers to create a kind of classy but casual scene uh, that I think will probably suit the watch quite well. So as I said, this was sent over for free, so I will leave more information and some affiliate links and things in the description if you're interested in the watch that's featured in this video. So remember, the point of the video is to find out what is more important, the camera body or the lens. So I'm gonna be using three different lenses, and in the interest of making this relatable but still actually quite objective for product photographers, um, I'm gonna be using two entry-level lenses, so that is a the Sony Nifty 50 or 50mm 1.8, and I'm gonna be using the Sony 28mm f2, which is actually, both of those lenses are really good lenses for getting started, understanding fast primes and your aperture and things like that. I'm also gonna be using the Sony 90mm macro, which is really essential for photography of this kind and particularly watch photography or small products and things like that as a macro lens. It's a bit more expensive, so it's not really accessible to a beginner, but it's still a very good lens and perfect for this, so that's why I've included it. So I've laid the clothes out in a very sort of casual way and I'm gonna be moving them around quite a lot. I've also added a plant to the scene, which adds a nice bit of green and it also gives us some depth. I like to add tall things to flat lace because it means you can shoot through them and it adds that depth. And again, we're gonna sort of talk about the fast primes that I'm gonna be using and things like that. So as I'm moving around the scene, I can see some of the obvious limitations of the entry level camera is that it doesn't have a viewfinder and I find it a little harder to focus. I like to see through the viewfinder and kind of get it pin sharp. So it's gonna be a little bit difficult, particularly when we're using the 90 mil macro. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna put five shots up on the screen right now, one after the other that I took using either of these cameras and any of these lenses. So what I want you to do is just try and guess, okay? Try and think to yourself, which of these are the entry level camera and which of these are the more professional camera? I don't know how you did, I don't know if there's any surprises in there, but the point I'm trying to make with this video is of the three main contributors to your photography, they come in this order, in my opinion. The most important thing is what's in your head, how much you've learned and what your experience is. So this is things like composition, how are you composing? How do you understand light? Things like that. Then the second most important thing is lenses. What lenses are you using? And this also draws from your experience as well. And finally, the least important thing, and maybe this will be controversial, but I think it is the camera body. It needs to be reasonably good, and it is horses for courses. So for example, I wouldn't take the A5100 to a football match and expect to come away with professional shots. But in this setting, shooting for Instagram, it's fine. It's doing the job just fine. One of the big limitations of the A5100 is that it doesn't have a viewfinder. And that to me is really frustrating, particularly when I was using the macro lens, I couldn't really find focus. I think that it will, a lot of it will be down to chance. Um, the depth of field is so shallow on that, particularly when I'm not using lights uh, and handheld, you know, 
It's not gonna be as sharp as the a7R2, but you know, it did the job. So I'll put all the shots up on the screen all at the same time. So as I look through all of the sort of pictures I picked before I picked the, the main five I wanted to put into the video, I noticed that actually my favorite shots happen to have come out of the 5100. Um, that's not because it's better or anything, that's just because I happened to take better shots at the time. Uh, but you can see this one was shot on the 90 millimeter and it's incredibly sharp. Um, and then another one here, which one was it? This one, again, really, really nice shot, uh, really sharp. The, the focus does drop off at this point. I'm not cleaning it up yet, but the focus does drop off at this point. But I think actually that adds a nice sense to the photo and it's almost the exact same photo as the a7R2. So you can see when I zoom, you really do have quite a lot here. Now, I think my least favorites of all of them, not so much in composition, because I actually really like this shot as a thumbnail and the one next to it as well, but it's really just the 28 mils not quite sharp enough to really punch through. And again here, I mean, I think this is obviously missed focus a bit as well, but it's not not terribly sharp. The focus is really here, not here. And the funny thing is, is that everything I'm describing is more to do with the lenses than the cameras. Again, there is really zero difference between the, um, the actual cameras themselves you can really see the difference between the 90 mil and the other lenses this is this is where the money goes when you spend quite a bit on a lens you can really see the difference of how these punch through particularly these these ones here i think you will agree that the entry level camera has actually kept up really well and a lot of that is down to the lenses and the composition and the actual flat lay. If you are just starting out with photography and you're thinking about your first or second camera, one thing I would keep in mind is to start thinking of the camera body as interchangeable and the lenses as investments. The more that you learn about lenses, the more this will make sense. But I promise you, if you can get some really great lenses and learn more about you know, uh, depth of field and things like that. Fast Prime's a really good way to, to get to get to know that feeling. You will find that the most important thing is the lens and in your own experience. The other really big difference between the A5100 and the A7R2 is that the A5100 is a crop sensor and the A7R2 is a full frame sensor. So it's really just a smaller sensor and this translates into a tighter image when you're composing. So I'd be really interested in what you think of all of this, whether you agree or disagree. Are you a beginner looking for a new camera or are you a professional who completely disagrees with my opinion on this? I'd love to hear from you. So hit the comments and let's start a discussion. If you feel like you can relate or you learned something from this video, make sure you hit the like button. And if you want to get more of this stuff, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And if you do, I will see you in the next video.